recall to memory the intended learning outcome definition, the outcomes you want students to achieve at the end of the path. Now reflect on why it is so important to start a learning innovation design process from the end, in other words, from defining the intended learning outcomes. Because a teaching and learning experience involves different people with different purposes, so it is important that teacher designer take the responsibility to clearly formulate right from the start the intended learning outcomes. Intended learning outcomes may be also the teacher's guide in the design of teaching and learning activities and in the choice of the assessment strategies that will allow him or her to observe whether or not the intended learning outcomes have been achieved. So, be careful. We have mentioned three elements here. The intended learning outcomes, the teaching activities and the assessment strategies. These elements constitute the fundamental pillars of a logical tool that they will be of great help along the entire learning innovation design process. Let's have a look at it. This man is John Biggs, is a famous pedagogist born in Tasmania. He designed a very helpful logical tool called precisely Biggs Triangle. What does the Big Triangle tell us? It tells us that the prerequisites for an effective teaching is that there is a correct logical alignment among the intended learning outcomes, the teaching and learning activities, and the assessment strategies that allow us to observe if the intended learning outcomes have been met. Biggs defined this process as constructive alignment. What did he mean by alignment? This is already clear looking at the triangle in this diagram, in the sense that the prerequisite of an effective teaching is being able to design a consistent alignment among these three elements that are interconnected to each other. Intended learning outcomes, assessment strategies and activities. But why constructive? because it allows learners to build their own learning. In Big's perspective, in fact, the role of the learner is at the center of the teaching and learning processes. Thanks to the fact that the teacher designs appropriate teaching and learning activities, students can create their own learning outcomes, which the teacher will then observe through assessment processes. In Big's vision, teachers, once they have formulated the intended learning outcomes, need to do everything they can to activate a context that fosters their achievement. In his considerations on the intended learning outcomes, Big reminds us of another very important thing. When we are designing the intended learning outcomes for a lesson, we must never forget the fact that this lesson fits into a wider context. A context that is constituted by all the other courses of a degree program and from the institution in its entirety. So when we are designing the learning outcomes for a single course, we need to have in mind which are the profiles expected at the end of the student's academic career by the degree program. It is also important to take into account the soft skills acquired in the labour market that often, as documented in many reports and documents issued by the European Union, are not thought of as a crucial link to employability within many universities. Now we can move on and see how effectively formulated the intended learning outcomes for making them a real reference point that helps us in our choices every time we stand at a crossroad in the design of our teaching and learning path. So, what does effectively formulating the intended learning outcomes mean? And what does it mean to formulate specific ILOs for soft skills? It means first to think about our students and what realistically they will be able to perform 
at the end of the course. It is relevant to think in terms of performances because performance has this wonderful quality to be observable. The fact that an intended learning outcome is observable allows us at the end of the course to effectively verify if it has been achieved or not. Let's try with an example. I could simply say the student will know the basis of integral calculus. Or I could venture into a more articulate intended learning outcome and say, for example, the student will be able to present using the correct disciplinary language the definitions and the theorems of integral calculus. If I just say that the students have to know something, I won't be able to observe it. This is the reason why we need to formulate intended learning outcomes in terms of observable performances. In that way, we will be able to put the basis for the constructive alignment that, according to Bix, constitutes an effective teaching and learning design process. We already discussed how Bix underlines the importance of the intended learning outcomes to be consistently aligned with the strategies that we adopt to observe them and with all the activities that we put into play along the learning and teaching path. So, if I formulate these intended learning outcomes in terms of performance, it almost automatically means I already know how I'm going to evaluate them currently. In fact, when I say students will be able to present definitions and theorems using the correct disciplinary language, etc., it's already clear that I will observe students presenting the contents in a specific way. In this way, we will have a higher probability of creating a truly constructive alignment among the internal learning outcomes, the teaching learning activities and assessment strategies compared to a context where we might leave a more generic objective such as the student will know. To help us formulate intended learning outcomes in terms of performance, we can use the startup formula, the student will be able to. Afterwards, we can add a verb, that is the action we expect the student to, to complete, and the object, that is the field of application specific to this action. Then we can further specify the intended learning outcomes, also giving information on the context of application of the performance. Let's try with an example related to soft skills. We might have, the student will be able to organize and track starting from a specific agenda and in the assigned time frame, an effective meeting to make a strategic decision within the project team. You might have noticed already that when we talk about soft skills related uh, intended learning outcomes, the focus is on a particular kind of performance that doesn't belong to a result as a product or an objective change, but belongs to the process and the relationship among the subjects involved. In our example, we refer to the organization skills on assessing modalities, tools and communication style adopted by the student in order to organize effective meeting. It is important to be aware then that measuring this particular kind of ILOs related to soft skills is possible and effective, but is very challenging. It requires a meta-level of analysis, which goes beyond the final outcome of the activity. Instead, it focuses on the actions, the attitude, the organizations, the dynamics acted during the process to come to the final outcome. Recall our example. We, as teachers, should verify how students conduct the action explicitated in the ILO. How has the meeting been communicated? In which way team members have been involved? How do they interact among the team to make the strategic decision? In this video, we saw what an intended learning outcome is and that its formulation should focus on the transformation of knowledge abilities and skills we expect to be part of our students at the end of the course, and not only in terms of subject matter knowledge.
So it is important when thinking about the student's performance to be explicit in the intended learning outcome, to include the soft skills that are going to be developed during such performance.